people. I come into a game with a brand new video. Um, this time it is a Eagle Eye episode. I owe you guys about 80,200 versions of these. <laughs> so given that it is the last, um, we're, we're coming up towards the end of the transfer window, I'm going to bombard you with this over the course of this week. So stay strapped. First of all, my sincerest apologies about when I started the stream. Um, initially, I set it up just before nine because I was going to squeeze it in before Lee's show. Then Lee came on. Um, I had a couple of bits and bobs to do work-related, not to do this, to do the primary job. Um, and then, essentially, I realised it was 11. I was like, ah! So, <laughs> my bad. My sincerest apologies. But it doesn't mean that I weren't going to give you a video. So, we late, but we here. So, um, I hope you guys are well. Please do stick a like on this video. Hit that subscribe button. Picked up a nice number of subs uh, from the um, uh, Watch Along from Bournemouth. So, that's brilliant. Let's see if we can keep that momentum going. And let's see if we can get you guys on your... Uh, um, uh, uh, on your uh, sorry, Don Juan is per usual just distracted me. Uh, let's see if we can keep you guys on your like uh, grind. Uh, let's see if we can get over a hundred likes today. All right, so I said I'd give you guys a decent show, a length show. Let's get it popping. Let's start off with the very first story, and that is Makola Matavienko. You have no idea how many times I've practiced this name to not butcher it. <laughs> so I am quietly proud of myself. The 23-year-old Ukraine international um, looks like the defender that we are going to buy, which 24 hours ago would not have seemed likely uh, because up until today, in fact, up until three hours ago, it looked like we were still trying to thrash out this Pablo uh, Mira uh, deal. Um, and then it looks as though, according to reports, that he actually has gone back to Brazil, even though he's desperate to move to Arsenal. Um, he's continuing to miss training sessions in order to move to Arsenal. Um, just to give you a little timeline or an idea of what exactly has happened, um, supposedly Arsenal brought this guy into England. <laughs> I mean, the way we do business, man, it's, it's embarrassing. So this, Arsenal brought this guy into England for a medical. He had the medical on Sunday. Um, and he was all set to sign on loan, apparently. The club thought that, well, it's seven million. Surely Arsenal are going to spend seven million on our prized asset. Um, but Arsenal apparently last minute said, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. This is a loan deal. This ain't no permanent deal. The club have thrown it, uh, 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 the club that we're buying it from, uh, Flamines or what, Flamines or whatever, however you pronounce the club, the Brazilian club. <laughs> um, they kind of threw their toys out of pram, understandably so. Like, what are you talking about? This is a permanent deal. We're not asking for a lot of money here. Um, and we've been trying to negotiate with them ever since. Meanwhile, we've just been going about our business, trying to see if we could sneak this Macola. Uh, Matabianco deal over the line. Um, it's <laughs> the way we do business. It is a mess. It is a mess. I don't care what anyone says. You know, I, I remember when I, I had doubts about this board and people were saying, oh, no, 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 that um, uh, Spanish Dell boy's in charge and uh, Asian Ivan's in charge uh, and Edu's now there. Oh, it'd be a lot smoother. It seems more calamitous. Look, at, I mean, it's. The way we do de uh, 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 deals is just it's embarrassing. Imagine signing this, bringing this guy all the way from Brazil to essentially dick tease him and then send him back. It's un unbelievable. It's embarrassing. So supposedly he's on his way back to Brazil. Um, Arsenal have apparently decided that Matavianko is the guy. Actually, out of the two... Hold on. Randomly, my phone has just started playing something. Bear with me. Um... <laughs> the, 
Big up Alex Gomez. Big up Alex Gomez. So yeah, he's on his way to Brazil now. To be honest with you, Matavianko is the is the defender I wanted more. Um, just given the fact that you know, I remember. I'm not going to try and pretend like I'm some sort of expert or I've seen this guy. You're not going to get that crap from me. But I have seen. I obviously saw the the Shakhtar Donetsk uh, Man City game, and he played pretty well. I do remember him. Uh, he's not a particularly physical defender, though. He's more of an anticipator. He's more of a... I've heard people compare him to a Mustafi. Do you know what I will say? He's not Mustafi, but he is what I think the club thought Mustafi would be, uh, which is, I know, a little bit of a concern, but I think he reads the game a little bit better than Mustafi. Um, anticipates a lot of good balls, uh, his positioning is very, very good. He's got decent pace. I do worry a, le a little bit about his physicality. Um, he can be sometimes... I wouldn't say he's weak on the ball, but what he can do sometimes is a little bit overly aggressive um, in terms of certain tackles that he does make. So sometimes if he gets barged off the ball, almost to overcompensate, he'll do some sort of dumb tackle. I don't think tackling is necessarily very high on his uh is very high on the radar with him. Uh, and then from that aspect when you compare the two, maybe Marin would have been the better choice. Uh, having said that, he's he's got decent pace. He's 23 years old, so he's still continuing to grow and develop. He is someone that Arteta identified not just for Arsenal, Arteta identified him early for Man City. Like early for Man City. Um, in fact, to be honest, Mari is also someone that Arteta identified because he also worked with Mari when Mari was part of the Man City squad. So we're really feeling some Arteta influence on our transfer business. That's for damn sure. Um, me personally, what do I hope comes out of both of these deals? Now, it's said to be, this. these are according to reports in the Ukraine, by the way. So the Ukraine are the ones that are reporting this. Um, in terms of the Ukraine, I think the, the idea is that this will be a loan deal with a view to definitely buying in the summer. So this is not going to be an option to buy. This is going to be an obligation to buy. And that is what has convinced Shakhtar Donetsk to part with him. Because there was a lot of reports early on that Shakhtar didn't want no loan deal. They wanted a permanent deal, and that was that. Obviously, I also have no cash. So my understanding, there's, there's not really a lot of reports out there, but my understanding is that this is going to be a, a loan deal with a obligation to buy in the summer. Uh, the player himself, apparently, is quite keen to come to England and obviously apply his trade. Um, and, you know, we seem to be getting a defender, a defender who is a left-sided central defender, it's something that Arsenal have been after for some time. You know, when you think about all the centre-backs we do have, they're all right footers. <laughs> so I, I think, it. I think you know, in terms of the way Arteta plays, if you look at the Man City uh, 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 blueprint for a second, when they brought, I think Laporte is a left footer, and apparently their distribution from the back instantly got better simply because they had a left footer in the team. I'm a big proponent of having a balance in that defence. And if you can find left-footed defenders, bring them on. We obviously know that Saliba is a right-footer. Um, they obviously like their ball playing defenders. Um, if it was me, I'll get them both. L let's be real. We need defenders, yo. We need, de we need defenders. And if it was up to me, I would, I would love them both. I, I mean, for me, why not? It's not like Mari's going to break the bank. Bring them both. Why not? I, I think that shows a real statement of intent that, okay, we're looking to fix this defence. And then, yeah, when Saliba does come, he has to compete for his place. But, you know, Arsenal are never about this life. We do things in a clumsy, oafy way. And this transfer business has been another example of that. But, yes, yeah, supposedly, according to reports in Ukraine, Arsenal have agreed a deal in principle 
for Matt uh, for Mikola Mac, uh, Matabianko. I'm not gonna butcher it. Uh, so yeah, let me talk about other stories. Uh, it's not in Skype. You're absolutely right. But if you type it, if you type his name into any Google search, you will see what happens. But the reports are stemming from the Ukraine, specifically from the Ukraine. Uh, in fact, I'll even give you the source directly. According to Ukrainian source, Commander One, that's K-O-M-A-N-D-A, -A One. So presumably it's a, 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 a media outlet in the Ukraine. Um, we've thrashed out a deal for with Sector for this player. Um, okay, so that's that. Let's talk about Thomas Lamar. So Thomas Lamar is someone that a lot of people have asked me my opinion on. Um, like, would I get him? Would I not? Uh, for me, um, so this is why I had some dispute with Lee yesterday because he was talking about Thomas Lamar being 35 million. I have not seen any report where Thomas Lamar is 35 million. The report I'm reading right now says that Atletico Madrid are still to this day demanding 51 million for him. That's why I'm a little bit like, whoo, don't about that 51 mil though, still. But obviously, this is a midfielder that we have been linked with uh, heavily uh, during his time at Monaco. Um, and was obviously a very good player at Monaco. Listen, don't get it twisted. He's not become a terrible player overnight. Sometimes moves work out and sometimes they don't. Um, Atle Atletico Madrid stumped up a lot of money for him. Uh, they took him last summer. And to be honest, he hasn't really worked out for him. He, he's not scored goals. He's not got any assists. Uh, people say Pepe's a flop. Blimey. I mean, this is a real, real flop out here. Uh, so you might think to yourself, so cheap, would you get him? I'd take him on loan, you know. I would. I, I'd have a punt on loan. I've just got a feeling sometimes in the right team, with the right players around you, it could be a stroke of genius. Plus, he's a left winger, like an actual left winger. So we're not shoehorning Martinelli down that left, who I don't believe is a wet left winger. You could argue that maybe Saka deserves that opportunity there on that left wing. I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you. Uh, honest, quite honestly, I, I don't think Tierney's guaranteed a spot because... Uh, I'm, I wouldn't necessarily take Saka out of the team for Tierney right now. Well, not necessarily. So I think it really depends on what you want to do with Saka to, as to whether or not you buy Thomas Lamar. Uh, obviously, lots of teams are interested in him. Spurs are interested in him. Uh, United are interested in him. So clearly, people still believe that there is a player there. I'm one of those people that still thinks there's a player there. Um, Reports in France also claim that um, now Bayern Munich have entered the fray and are ready to make an offer. I'd be shocked if he goes to the German League. I don't think the German League will suit him either. Um, I'd love to see him come to the Premier League, see if Arteta can develop him. But I think it'd be silly to buy him outright. Um, I'd say try and get that, that deal done on a loan. But after we've got our defenders, this should not be a priority by any means, it should be after it should be a bonus, a cherry on top, uh, for me. But yeah, it looks as though we are after Thomas Lamar. Um, what other story am I going to talk about now? Um, so there's, there's a story here about the fact that we're going to be doing some during the winter break, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of um, uh, uh, warm weather training. So our winter break kicks in on the 7th of Feb. Um, and we're going to be going to the Middle East just to do some warm weather training. I'm all for that. Um, for me, I think other teams do it. Why don't we? So I'm all for it. Um, okay. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. Just talk about a couple more things um, on this deal. Uh, Real Madrid. So, obviously, there was a lot of stories recently about Dani Ceballos. I obviously haven't given my comments on this. But Dani Ceballos, um, 
has recently come back from injury. Uh, first couple of games, it looks like Arteta has started him. Um, was expecting him to start on Monday. He didn't. <laughs> so it kind of makes you think, hmm, okay. Uh, so maybe clearly something Arteta's not liking about what this kid is doing. He's not rating something about this kid because he's not starting him. Um, pretty interesting move for me because it's not like we are we have an abundance of creative players in the team. Um, I think Willett did well, but I wouldn't necessarily say he's a creative player. You know, I think Guendouzi during his cameo against Chelsea, I potentially could be that guy. I still think he could potentially convert him into a number 10 because um, I do think that might suit him better. Uh, but again, he's not that guy. He's not a, he's not a number 10 right now. Uh, Meza Ozil, don't tell me he's a creative player because we'll just we'll, we'll fall out. <laughs> so you think that there'd be a space in the team for Danny Ceballos. But for whatever reason, he's not starting games. Uh, Arteta almost seems to be challenging him in the way he challenged Pepe initially. Um but Danny, Danny Sabayo saying playing that shit. <laughs> My man is desperate to get into the Spanish uh, squad for the Euro 2020s, which is understandable. Um, that's the whole reason that he went on loan in the first place. Um, so his idea was to cut the loan short. Um, the story being that Valencia were very interested in taking him on loan for the rest of the season. Uh, but actually what's happened now is that Real Madrid have actually blocked the, any attempts for Danny uh, for Danny Sabas to join Valencia on loan. So if uh, Real Madrid were to agree to cut the loan short, and Arsenal, of course, were to agree to cut the loan short, then um, he would go back to Real Madrid's bench, presumably. So I think it's in his interest to just calm down off his hype, work hard, uh, because surely, I mean, if anybody understands the position and what you do. It's Mikel Arteta. And he's Spanish. So I think hopefully Danny Sabres can just hold tight, relax, be easy, and just be show some patience and work hard. And I can't emphasize work hard enough and get in the team. That that would be what I'd like to do from him. Um is there anything else I wanted to talk about with you guys today? Is there any other stories that I missed out on? Uh, I did see a hilarious story about uh, Emmanuel Adebayor being linked with a uh, return to the Premier League with Villa, Newcastle and Brighton interested in him, which I think is hilarious. Um, more Barcelona sniffing around at, at, uh, at Bamiyang. Um... What else? What else? What else? Yeah, I don't think there's anything else really. Oh, interestingly, I might as well end end with this before I come into the chat room and see what you guys are saying. Thank you so much for joining me so late. I know it is late. Please do stick a like on this video as we talk about the stories. Uh, let's talk about Kazawa. So Kazawa. Um, who has a uh, who's supposed to have transferred to Juventus? Uh, there was supposed to be some sort of swap between uh, him and Mattia Dia Siagillo. Um, apparently, those talks are breaking down. Um, it's very interesting actually because there's two parts to the story because they believe that Arsenal might come in, come back in for him, but this is a signing that is not an Arteta signing. This is a, a signing that is being driven by Edu. In fact, so much so, uh, Edu was the one that suggested Kazawa. Arteta's the one that's vetoed it. And that's the reason why we've not made a strong place since, because Arteta doesn't want him. So it's kind of like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I think that would have been a huge mistake. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't look like Arteta rates him. So, um, they are still linking him with us, uh, but I, I, I'm I hopeful that given the fact that Arteta apparently is a, doesn't rate him very highly, um, that he won't come to Arsenal. So, yeah, 
The reason that Kazawa is not an Arsenal player right now is because of Mikel Arteta. Tell you what, little things like that are going to make me impressed with Arteta. Little things like that. Because I, I was a bit worried, <laughs> if you want me to be honest. I'm going to talk about this story initially because it's only one person that's been... Oh, I've got to talk about that as well. I'll come back to that. Let's talk about um, Lewis Dunk. Uh, initially, I thought we were being linked with a move for Lewis Dunk. We're not. It's Ray Parler that wants us to go and buy Lewis Dunk. You'll find this from Arsenal legends. They will start randomly suggesting English talent, English players. Um, and he's one of those people who you know, believes that we need English steel. I don't necessarily disagree with it if they're good enough. I like Lewis Dunk. I think he's a decent player. He's not a ball-playing centre-back. He's one of those sort of centre-backs that's going to fight for you, battle for you, but he's not going to be a, a slick player out from the back type. He's just not that guy. Um, obviously, he's being rated to be £40 million. Pounds. Um, but basically, Ray Parler says... Uh, I like the way he plays as a proper centre-back. That's what you need sometimes. Sol Campbell was a proper centre-back when I played. He stopped you scoring, and that's what you want from your centre-half. He doesn't have to be great on the ball at all times, but we're talking about different players. The one thing I'll say, though, about this point about Sol Campbell, Sol Campbell had decent footballing ability. Lewis Dunk, I like him as a player. I wouldn't necessarily put him in that category. It's one of the reasons why, if you notice, I like Ben Me. I've said it for some time that I quite like Ben Me. I've never been overly eager to push Ben Me as a target for Arsenal because I understand that Arsenal like a little bit of slickness. Now, you might be sat there thinking, well, that's half of our problem, surely. But if you look at the modern-day footballer, even a Van Dyke, who I actually think sometimes on the ball can look quite clumsy. But actually, he has decent footballing ability, you know? Harry Maguire is another one that looks quite clunky on the ball. But the modern-day footballer does it almost demands that you're able to do a little bit more. Even as a goalkeeper, how much more is a centre-back? So I can understand, you know, these legends, they love pushing the English talent. I get it. You know, it wasn't so long ago that I think David Seaman wanted us to go and get, uh, what is that Stoke guy? Uh, 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 Jack, um, not Grealish. Um, uh, what is the name of that Stoke goalkeeper? Someone in the chat rem remind me. But yeah, it wasn't so long ago that uh, David Seaman wanted us to get him. You know, they, they like throwing these English names out there. I get it. You know, you got to keep English football alive by any means necessary. I get it. Uh, I just, for me, uh, if we go and get Lewis Dunk, no problem. If we're looking at Premier League talent, I think Connor Cody's better. And I think for that sort of money, you go and get a Connor Cody rather than a Lewis Dunk, in my view. Um, but anyway, you guys let me know what you think. Last story I'm going to talk about, and I promise, before I, uh, before I come into the chat room, I hope you guys are continuing to hit that like button. I know I bang on and on and on about it, but I do need help with that like button. So crush it, destroy it, drop kick it, make it tap out. Do what do what you've got to do. Just press it, God damn it. It's free. Uh, let's talk about Cedric Suarez. Suarez, Suarez, however you want to say it. Apparently, Arsenal are very interested in him. Um, this is an interesting story because. Four or five weeks ago, I could believe this story. Now, it just seems like, huh. When you consider the fact that Ainsley Maitland-Niles has played pretty well there in that position recently, in addition to the fact that actually Hector Bellerin is now up running and actually has played quite well the last couple of games, this seems like a really strange story all of a sudden. But according to the Daily Mail, uh, the, uh, Arsenal are looking to offer $5 million for the defender. Um, I, take, I, I say take that with a pinch of salt because it's kind of like, well, wh wh why, why all of a sudden? It just doesn't make no sense. 
But I know that Hector is, is quite injury prone. So maybe they might think, ah, for five million, maybe we should strengthen it. Um, and it wasn't so long ago that you've heard me say we need a new right back. I still think we could do with a new right back. But it's not, I mean, there are so many other things that we could be prioritizing right now. Uh, right back isn't necessarily it. Right back should be one of those positions that we look at in summer, along with a goalie for me, and along with a, a DM for me. Um, but at, at the moment, uh, it seems like a strange story. So I say take that with a pinch of salt. Uh, but I, you know, I can understand. I think Southampton obviously had a horrible start to the season, including that 9 0 win. But they're starting to grind some results here and there. Um, and he's been one of their better performers. So um, you guys let me know what you think. Again, leave it in the comments below or leave it in the chat room. All right, guys, I think that's pretty much it in terms of the stories covered. Uh, what is there anything that you feel like I haven't missed that I missed? Butland, there you go. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Jack Butland. Um, is there anything you guys just think I've missed or you want me to cover? Just let me know. Uh, we should sign Sangara or Kamavinga. Kama Kama uh, I've never heard of Kamavinga, must admit. Sangara, absolutely. A bit rough around the edges, but he's an excellent DM. Evening, bro. How are you? Cedric is a decent crosser, but can defend. Yep, I can understand. I can't defend yet. Yeah, he's, he's another one who's good going forward, right? Cedric would be a steal. 28 years old, Cedric. 28 years old. Prefer Pope. Uh, agree, Colin. Agreed. Um, I don't think Arsenal will be linked with Adam. And Taib, who was the one that told you this in the first place? Your boy Chick. I said this from the get go that we ain't getting no Apple Meccano. Like, uh, listen, we weren't getting him in January. And if we weren't going to get him in January, we damn sure ain't going to get him in the summer. I think he'll end up at City. I've said that from the get go. From the get go. Uh, Hamas Rodriguez, thoughts? Uh, I'm not going to lie. This is a story that worries me a lot every time it comes up. I put this in the, the Solomon Kalu bracket. Uh, I put this in the <coughs> David Luiz bracket. <laughs> but then we ended up with David Luiz, so, so it does worry me. Um, this is one guy I don't understand why he's always being linked with us, but supposedly we are interested still and signing James Rodriguez from Real Madrid. Real Madrid are probably desperate to get him off the books. Um, from our perspective, I just don't get it. I don't get what we would want to, in him so badly that we would try and get him even on loan. Um, for me, no thanks. No thanks. Camavinga makes too many fouls and needs to improve defensively. Um, how long before we sell? I, I know, right? The one thing I will say though, Buster, because me, me and Lee have been saying that, but then I did see an encouraging story today. Um, they actually asked Martinelli straight up, Would you be interested in a move to Real Madrid? And he came out and said, um, that he has no interest uh, in moving to Real Madrid or Barcelona, that he wants to. He means it when he says he wants to create history with Arsenal and win titles with Arsenal. And he wants to repay the club in the faith that they've shown him and the fans by the way they've welcomed him. So give, give that three years, though. <laughs> I'll give him three years before his, his tunes start changing. But it was good to hear. It was good to hear for sure. I'm good, mate. I hope you're well. I hope you're well. 
Um, I don't want a number ten. I want these. I want these Grealish, Madison, etc. Complete midfielders, complete number eights. I've got news for you. Madison's a number ten. <laughs> you, even if you argue that Grealish is a number eight, Madison's a number ten. Well, but they just play it in a different sort of way. They play it in a way that, it, ironically, Will played it yesterday. Deep running, um, hard working. The only difference between Willock and, and these guys is I think these guys are a little bit better passers. But other than that, they're both number 10s. They're just the way a modern-day number 10 should play. They, they shouldn't play like a Meza Ozil. They should play like this. Because the good thing about the way these two play is that it is, and I say this as someone who used to defend 10 stone ago, but used to defend, right? It is damn near impossible to defend a, a late runner or a late runner onto the ball. That kind of Lampard-esque way of playing football. It is proper hard to defend that. How do you track that? You know? Whereas with a Meza Ozil, who's always lingering about up front, you just follow him. Put two man on him. He ain't going nowhere. There's a reason why, say, a Madison or a Grealish is doing a lot more this season than a Meza Ozil. You know? So I think I think people people need to kind of like uh people need to kind of like relax a little bit. But I've got news for you. Madison is very much number 10. He is a number 10. He's very attacking. Uh, very, um, he, he likes to stick to Vardy hard. So, yeah. I would say Grealish, if anything, is more box to box. I'll, I'll give you that one. I, I wouldn't mind Grealish replacing uh, Granite Jacker, personally. Uh, all right, six more minutes and I'm out of here. That takes us to midnight in the UK. Six more minutes. 45 million Grealish, uh, 45 billion party, a right back, two centre backs in the summer. I'll be happy. Well, if you can get those two centre backs now, take that off the list. That's less for us to get. Grealish wants to be a Guna, uh, Madison. I, I, let me. I got news. I hate to keep poo pooing stuff. These people that think we're going to get Madison for eighty million, you must be smoking bone. It ain't going to happen. But my, my, so might as well just poo poo that right now. Grealish is far more likely, but this Madison dream. Let's uh, get rid of that now. Connor versus Diaz three. Has that been confirmed now, Alan, or you're just saying random stuff? Do you rate Kemba Bassi? Again, I know I, you mentioned this before. I don't know if you're trying to make me sound, say something dodgy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who that is. I generally don't. We won't get anyone. Vamos, you're probably right. I'm still hoping Arsenal get lucky and win the, cha the Europa League. We need that Champions League money. For the, I think that's the first comment of yours, Don Juan, I've agreed with in about six months. <laughs> so well done. <laughs> well done. Uh, what source is this rumour from? It's a Ukraine outlet. I've said it a couple of times. I'll say it one last time. Bear with me. Let me see if I can find it. Just for you. Hold on. Wait a minute. Uh... Yes, so the outlet is Commander One. K-O-M-A-N-D-A -A One. So it's a Ukrainian news outlet that believes that we have a, agreed a deal in principle for Shakhtar Donetsk player Makola Matyenko. <clears throat> so 
yes. Like, like I make up stories. I mean, point cost, guys. Uh, I want Grealish, Apamakano, Zayek, and Lamar. Yeah, I want a naked Kelly Brook. <laughs> Could happen. <laughs> oh, and even the wife wouldn't remind me admitting that. It ain't going to happen. Like, what are we talking about here? Yeah, I'll, me, me and Ola will, will do something special for that one. Mad ST9. I hope you've subscribed to the new um, channel of me and Ola's. I hope you've subscribed to that. Link is in the description below to that channel. Don't you, we need Pablo Mari. Um, I wouldn't mind both. I honestly wouldn't. I, I think why not? What what like why not? We got three we got three centre backs that are fit at the moment. One of them is suspended. Um hold on. Mustafi, Socrates, Holding. Okay, Louise. All right, we got four centre backs. But one of them is suspended. One of them is, is injury prone. One of them is error prone. Bring them both on. Chig, is Zayat coming? Nope. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. But nope. Chig knows naked. <laughs> Do you think Zayat is coming? Nope. Uh, I, I must admit, for whatever reason, it doesn't seem like the board or even Arteta rates him very highly. Showing your age, Chig. Kelly Brook. Yep. You're damn right. You damn right, Kelly Brook. Don't want Kelly Brook is still fine. Let's not get it twisted. She is still fine. Um, holding can Callum Chambers. Callum Chambers is injured, bro. I'm talking about available defenders. Holding can't hold hold the defense. Not, not in good form. Luis is back next game sh until his next uh, proof. Told you where the I told you where the story comes from, bro. I, I talk about transfer stories on this uh, on this particular section of the show. That it is in the description. Just saying. Um. Brooke Shields, that's age. There you go. I never saw, never said that. <laughs> but Safi's been playing better than Holden. Well, yeah, until the error. I can't disagree with that. Yeah. Damn right. But hotter than most of these chicks right now. Um, Chig, I'll tell I Holden, I'd sell him. I said I don't rate him at fault for Chelsea's second goal. Let me tell you something. This is the last season I would have Cullen Chambers and Rob Holding in the setup. So, without trying to sound cold on that, because I know they're like best friends or whatever, one of them got to go. They're both at the sort of age where they're turning 25. One of these guys needs to set, step up. Um, it'd be interesting to see who you guys would keep. In fact, who would you guys keep out of the two? Rob Holding or Callum Chambers? Let me ask you that. Um, I want Apple Meccano, but why would he come here? Yeah. And we ain't spending 60-odd million on him. It ain't happening. Happy 40th. I hate Lee. I want, I want him to know that. Uh, <laughs> should we sell Holding at the end of the season? I'd be tempted. I'd be tempted. See, I, I tend to agree personally with Chame, with G, with GK. Here's the thing, right? I actually think, this is where I'm not going to make any sense. I actually think that Holding has more tools than Chambers. But I think that Chambers is more dependable than Rob Holding, in my opinion. So... It really depends on if you believe that uh, Holding has the ability to be more consistent. 
So out of both. Wow. Okay. Break the bank and get uh, uh, Nathan Aki ASAP. I'm not necessarily against that. I thought he had a great second half against us, to be honest. Not wide chambers, he could play right back. Do you, do you... See, this is most of the problem, no matter. So most of the problem is, I hate this idea of we need a player that can play three, four positions. No. How about they master one of those positions first? You know? <coughs> I'd have him play at centre-back. Let him master that position. Holding is better, in my opinion. Uh, Holding is better technically, like Louise, but he's defensively Premier League ex uh, in experience. Like I say, I think I think Holding is better technically uh, and has a higher ceiling, but I think Chambers is more dependable. And, it, and when it comes down to dependable, to me, that's what I'd prefer to rely on. I prefer to rely on someone that's not going to, you know, fuck up every two seconds as opposed to uh, Chambers, who might not necessarily be the best technically, but is always, or I would say eight times out of ten is reliable. And he's had a pretty good season. Oh, oh, for sure, though. Definitely. Definitely a squad player. For sure. Both of both of squad players, both of them. Sheamus is applying himself better since Holden came back. How do you figure that out? It's been out. It's, it's not been there. What are you talking about? Apple Meccano is one more knee, knee, knee injury far from ending career. Uh... We're trying to play Ozil at right back. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Bad known Chambers has been there for four for five years. Imagine saying a manager isn't good with no signings. Um, Holding has been riddled with injuries, still not fully fit. So would you keep the, the riddled with injuries guy? That's my question. All right, guys. Anyway, I have definitely done a decent left show. Not a long, long show, but a decent left show. I'll be back again tomorrow. Same show, same time, tomorrow. So stay tuned. Uh, until then, I'm out of here. And it will be a little bit earlier tomorrow, I promise. All right. Peace.